So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Well, we're going to be cooking us a pot of good old white beans on the wood cook stove today. I decided I wanted some white beans instead of pinot beans. And um, cooked them on the wood cook stove all day long. Makes some of the best beans you've ever ate. And makes a wonderful roux. Me and Mr. Brown are a little bit picky about our beans. Uh, we don't like watery beans. We like a good roux. A real dark roux with our beans, whether if it's white or pino beans, either one. And if you hear something background, that's my granddaughter. She's playing. But uh, we're going to get started. Now, what I've done is I've just took, I'm just going to cook a pound today. And my favorite beans, whether if it be white beans, pino beans, black beans, red beans, my favorite brand has always been Brown's Best. And... Uh, They've been around forever. Maybe it's because that's what my grandma used. I don't know, but I do like them. And I'm gonna be putting some uh, pork jowls in there. Now I just got these at Walmart. I don't have any fresh pork jowl right now. I don't have any fresh pork in the freezer. Um, but this is Bear Creek uncooked smoked uh, pork jowl. And I just get this at Walmart and I picked me up a couple of them and um, Let's see, that is, I was trying to see, it's just a little over a pound of pork gel. You don't have to put that much in there, but I always do. Um, you can put bacon, you can put ham, you can, even if you don't have ham or bacon, but you got a little bit of bacon grease left over, put that bacon grease in there. Anything like that is going to give them beans a wonderful taste. And if you don't want to put anything in there like that, just salt and pepper, a little garlic onion powder, and uh, that makes for a good pot of beans too. But to me, the secret of a good pot of beans is low and slow all day long. So the only time I really have time to cook beans is on Saturday, because that's the only day, unless I've got to go and do, because that's the only day we have off. Sundays is very busy too. So... I'll, when I cook a pot of beans, I want to cook enough, usually for us to eat for a couple of days or to put up for the weekend. Now, y'all know that I can a lot of dry beans, and I can always go over there, and I can uh, get me some white beans, pinto beans, or whatever, out of the pantry. But it's just not the same. It's not the same as cooking them beans all day long on that, on that stove. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So all I've done is I put a, one pound of white beans in a bowl. And I just run cold water over my beans and I just swish them around. And anything that comes to the top, I take out. I hardly ever, ever have to really take very many beans out. They all seem to be usually okay. Some will float to the top. Some of the skins will come up and that ain't gonna hurt you anyways. But I always run some like this. And when we would cook big pots of beans at school in the lunchroom, uh, we always, always went through them first to get any rocks or anything like that out of them because we always had to buy them in such big bulk bags that there would every once in a while be a rock or something in there. <laughs> you had to get them out. So cooking a pot of beans at school was always, um, it took a while, but we always seemed to get it done. So I've kind of rinsed them off. Swished them around to get the dirt and stuff off of them. Now we're just going to drain them. Now some people like to soak their beans overnight. And that's fine. I've never had to do that. 
Never, ever have I soaked my beans overnight. I'm not saying it's wrong or nothing. I just never have had to do it. And I've always come up, out with wonderful pot of beans. And that's just the way because that's the way I grew up doing them. I never seen anybody in my family ever soak beans overnight. That's because we cooked them all day long, low and slow. Now, I've also cooked beans in my Instant Pot and in the slow cooker. Slow cooker's good. Um, I don't really care for the juice. After they've been cooked in the slow cooker, it's just not thick enough, not rooey enough for me. But it's still a good pot of beans. So this is my favorite way to cook beans when I have time. So I've rinsed them good. Now we're just going to put them in the pot. And what I'm going to be using today is I'm using my... 16 quart stock pot is heavy duty. You can use whatever, whatever you use for, you know, for cooking beans or soups or whatever. Um, I do have some cast iron big pots, but I just like cooking my beans in this pot right here. It's my favorite pot when it comes to that. Um, if I was outside on campfire cooking beans, that's what I'd be using for sure. And we'll do that sometime. But to this 16 quart pot, I will be putting quite a bit of water. Um, so we got our 16 ounces of white beans. And I'm going to go ahead and start filling this up. I'm also going to put some salt and pepper in it. Now some people say if you put salt in with your beans, your beans end up tough. I've never had that issue. But what issue I have had is that if you wait to the end to try to salt stuff, you can't get it, you know, you just can't get it to your taste. So I prefer to go ahead and put salt while it's cooking because it will, of course, absorb that the seasonings into the beans. And I've never had a tough bean. I'm not saying that it's not true or anything else. I'm just saying for me, I've never had a tough bean going ahead and putting my salt in there. So how much salt? I'm just gonna measure it in my hand for right now, for a pound of beans, I'm going to put two teaspoons. I'm going to put some pepper. And what I've got in there right now is I'm starting out with about, um, since that's 16 quarts, and I'm going to do half a pot with water and the beans. So that's going to be about eight quarts of water to start out with. You want to have plenty of water in there. You can even put you, I think I'll go ahead and put a teaspoon and a half of pepper. You can also put you some chicken bouillon in there or some beef bouillon in there if you want to. And all these seasonings are just optional, y'all. I'm going to put, y'all know I put garlic in anything. So I'm going to put about a teaspoon of garlic. And, you know, as it cooks and as it gets closer to the end of time of being done and they're getting soft, I'll taste my beans. If I feel like it needs a little more onion powder or garlic, I'll put it in there. <clears throat> I'm going to put about a teaspoon of onion powder. And then I'm going to just throw my hog gel in there. It comes in two pieces, just like this. And as that hog jowl cooks with them beans, that meat on there is going to get tender. And then when it gets tender, it starts falling apart, and it's getting in with them beans, and it's just really good. So I'm going to take my pot over to the wood cook stove. Ready to get my pot of beans on here. And I'm just going to put some more wood on it. My grandma's wood cook stove was top loader, too. And she always had little kindling. And she was, and the little kindling sat over here to the side in, I don't even remember, but I just remember it being there. And uh, she was always throwing that little kindling in there, especially when she was fixing to make biscuits in the oven or cook on top. And I want a good hot, I want this to be good and hot so it'll keep them beans a, a simmering all day. So I've got two knobs here at the side and I'm gonna open it up a little bit. I'm gonna go get my beans.
I love having it where I can get to my wood cook stove now. Used to, I had to go all the way around that big bar. Just a minute, Sissy. So I'm gonna put it on the hottest part of the stove, and you can hear it popping this because the bottom of the pot was wet. And uh, I'm gonna stir it, and I'm gonna watch it and make sure that the water stays at a certain simmer. And I'm just gonna let it simmer all day long. That could simmer four or six hours. And in between, I'll make sure there's plenty of water in it because we like a lot of juice. So I always want to keep at least half a pot of juice. And of course, your beans are going to absorb that juice and they're going to puff up. So by the time we get done, I'll have a pretty good pot of beans cooked. And to me, there just ain't no better thing. So I'm going to get my, my, hand, my electric mill out. And uh, I'm not going to use the hand crank today. But we'll get the electric one out, and uh, we're going to mill some popcorn. And I'm going to show you how to make cornbread out of it. I'm going to be doing something just a little bit different today. Not that I've not ever done this, but I've never showed y'all. But I'm going to be using red popcorn. And I get this popcorn at the Mennonite store. But you can order it online. They even have a, a blue. But this is the red, and... Uh, I just thought that'd be neat to show y'all how you can make and how what it looks like after it's uh, been mixed up and cooked into cornbread. It tastes the same, pretty much, and um, it just makes a good pot of cornbread. But I thought y'all might like to see that. So I've been milling some red popcorn. And know that this is a very cheap way of keeping and instead of buying bags of corn popcorn is pretty cheap especially if you buy the off brand and if you even just have a, a hand crank uh, mill to mill your corn your uh, corn into corn meal this is the easiest and it keeps forever. Popcorn keeps forever. You can put your popcorn in mylar bags or uh, if you buy it in bulk. Or you can even put it um, in just a bucket with a good sealed lid on it. Uh, that's what I do with all mine. And then as I use it, I keep it in just a small bin like this in my pantry. We'll get my meal out. And we'll mill us up some red popcorn. And all I need for... Um, my recipe is just a cup of cornmeal. Um, I may do more than that and put it up. So I, next time I want to make some cornbread, I'll have it already milled. I don't like milling too much up ahead of time. Um, probably four cups at a time. Most of the time is what I mill. And I put it in a container. And uh, so I'll have it already milled. I wanted to show y'all what I mill uh, my grains and, and stuff with. Uh, this is a Nutrimill. And it is down in my Amazon store. That's where I got it from Amazon. I'm not sure. I haven't looked, but I will look if they even still make this this uh, same one. I'll have to go back and look. Even if they don't, I'm pretty sure they do. I'm sure that they've got one just like it. I've had this one several years. I love this Nutrimill. It does an absolute wonderful job grinding corn, berries, uh, rice, whatever. It does a wonderful job. And where I've got mine set is this one right here is for the motor, which makes it go as high as you want. And I set it about in the middle. And then my feed rate, I set it about in the middle too. So what you're going to see when I get done is it does a very good job grinding this popcorn and i'll get you up here where y'all can see it feeding through there now i'm gonna uh turn the volume off while this is grinding because it is loud you know when you're grinding corn and stuff it's going to be loud so while it's doing that i'll turn it off <laughs>
Okay, I want to show y'all. Y'all seen how that popcorn was feeding down both sides. That's your hopper. That's where your it's feeding down in there underneath these and going down in that hopper. And then it's uh, grinding it up. So you can see how it's covered right there. But there's two places on both sides that it feeds down in there. So we're going to open it up and we'll see how much uh, ratio to popcorn to meal we get. Okay, I want to show y'all. This is the top. So when it's in there, this is what goes up against the bottom where you're, right here is where the the meal comes through that hole, out of the hop. Once it grinds it, it comes out and it comes right in that hole. So when you fit this whole bowl in there, it's, you're going to have to really put it in there hard and it's going to click. And that gives that a good seal right around that. This right here is uh, the filter to keep stuff that, you know, that comes out or the stuff that's uh, don't need to be in there with your meal so this is the lid and it comes right off this is your your cup underneath Oops. and uh, it just gets some of the catches some of it that comes out and all you gotta do is just dump it in there and it does get on the top and stuff that's no big deal you get your brush and I didn't put it over here with me, but I do have a brush. And I just kind of brush that off into the rest of the cornmeal. It's got a good seal around it. So it seals very good. Um, when I grind my corn for my meal, I like it really fine grind. Now, you don't have to grind yours this, this fine like this. But you see how pretty that is? That's that red popcorn. And you can see how fine that is. Some people like coarse ground, and you can do coarse ground. So all you do is you just have to uh, put your knob where it's just coarse ground where you want it. And you'll figure that out once you use an electric uh, mill. You'll be able to figure it out where you need to put it. But this is the way we like it. It is so pretty and it smells so good. So what I did is I had, I believe I had three and a half cups let me think a minute. I may have had four. And I think I had four, four cups. Anyways, we're going to say around four cups of popcorn that I put in there and ground up. So let's see what we have as far as ground, what we're going to come out. I'm thinking I had three and a half is what I had. So there's two. There's three. There's four. So I got about four and three-fourths cup. And I'm I'm thinking, and that wasn't full. My cup wasn't full when I put them in there, but I thought I put about three, close to three and a half cups of unpopped popcorn in there. And I ended up with four and three-fourths cup of some beautiful, beautiful meal that we're going to be making some cornbread out of. And what I'll do is since I've done extra, is I'll put it in a good tight container. And uh, when I need some cornbread or just need some cornmeal for uh, fish frying or just anything that I'm doing, making hoe cakes or whatever, I've got it done. I do use a lot of cornmeal. I'm going to bring this up to you just a little bit closer so y'all can see the pretty color. It's a pretty, pretty color cornmeal. Okay, I, want, I just wanted to come and show y'all how my beans are. They took off boiling really good. I'm just going to stir them a little bit, and it smells so good in the house. I can smell that onion powder and the garlic and stuff in the in the beans and it smells really good. So I'm just giving them a good stir. I'm gonna put the lid back on and uh, I'm gonna move it over here just a little bit. And the reason for that is it's not as hot as it is right there. That way they, they'll just simmer and not boil as hard. And they still got a couple hours to go. 
In fact, probably about three hours. Can't wait. The white beans are still simmering on the wood cook stove. I want to go ahead and I want to get my cornbread cooked up. And I have cranked up the wood stove again, which means there's a back valve back there for cooking in the oven. You have to push it and open that oven up from the back. What it does is it, it moves the hot, the heat over the oven and around it when you open that back up. And that's what I've done because I want to get it up there about 400 at least. So we're going to be cooking our cornbread in there too. And then we're fixing to fry some chicken on top of the wood cook stove. So we've got our fresh ground uh, cornmeal here, which we done with popcorn. There's one cup. We've got this in my mixing bowl that I'm fixing to mix it all up in. I've got uh, one and one fourth cups of all-purpose flour. And I will put this uh, down in the, my information box. I'll put the recipe to the cornbread. I'm going to mix. I'm going to go ahead and put my, my cornmeal in with my one and one fourth cups of all-purpose flour. Now you can do this recipe with self-rising flour. I feel like it doesn't come out as uh, as good as if you go ahead and, and add your own baking powder and stuff to it, but it, it does work. It might not rise as high, but unless you add, you know, a little more baking powder to it. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of baking powder. Then I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of salt. Now, you've heard me say lots of times that Mr. Brown don't like a sweet cornbread. You can put you, if you like a sweet cornbread or just a touch of sugar in there, go ahead and do it. You can put you anywhere from, a, I don't know, a tablespoon to a fourth of a cup, and it'll still be okay. A little bit of sugar in there if you, if you like that. So we got our cornmeal. We've got our all-purpose flour, baking soda, salt. Now, what I've got here is I've got a fourth of a cup of bacon grease. And usually what I would put in here is a fourth of a cup of whatever oil, like my vegetable oil, lard, or whatever. But I cooked a bunch of bacon this morning. I'm putting a fourth of a cup of uh, bacon grease in here. So naysayers, I'm real sorry, but I am using bacon grease in this today. And you can use it to put in your, because we're fixing to put it in a hot cast iron skillet too. You can put your bacon grease in there too. So there's a fourth of a cup of bacon grease or oil. Now I'm going to put, this is buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, you can make some with a cup of uh, whole milk and a teaspoon of white vinegar, or you can just use whole milk. This usually takes, if you're using whole milk, it usually takes about a cup of whole milk, but when you're using buttermilk, it takes a little bit more because it's so thick. They usually take about a cup and a half of buttermilk. It's so funny because it is pretty cool outside, but the sun is shining. It's so pretty outside, y'all, today. But we know we got this Arctic cold coming in, too. Um, my granddaughter's out there playing right now because it's it's just right out there. She's got a good heavy coat on, and uh, she's just right out here where I can see her. And uh, she needs to enjoy it while she can today because I have a feeling she won't be outside much the next couple of days. So just add enough liquid till you get it the right consistency. Now, for some reason, I don't I don't really know why, but when I do my my own milled cornmeal, it seems to take more milk. And I think it's because it, I do it so fine that it just really soaks it up. Woo! 
Well, my spatula just come out. My... You ever had that to happen? I'm going to have to get me a another one out of my drawer. You never know what's going to happen. Real life. That just come right off there. I've had this little spatula forever. I use it for everything. It's just the right size for so much. Anyways, I'm not going to spend that much time on that. But I'm going to continuously just stir this up with my buttermilk until I get it the right consistency. Then I'm going to get egg I'm going to add in here. This is a double yolker, y'all. So I'm just going to put that double yolker in there. And I'm going to continue to stir, and I might have to still add some more buttermilk to it. When you're using your own milled flour, and you're doing it this fine, it seems to take just a little bit more liquid. One egg, one large egg is plenty. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit more buttermilk. And I think it's going to be to the right consistency then. Yes. So I'm going to mix this up. And then we'll get our cast iron skillets ready to pour our mix in. Now I've got just a couple of tablespoons of, uh, you can put oil or you can put some bacon grease. And this is a, pretty sure this is a 12, this may be a 10, I forget. But anyways, 10 to 12 is going to work with this cornbread. So I'm going to put this in my wood cook stove oven. It's getting hot over there because I want my pan and the oil that's inside here, I want it to get hot because that's what makes a good crispy bottom crust on your cornbread. And a wood cook stove makes some of the best cornbread and biscuits you ever ate. I got my pan over here with some peanut oil on it for my fried chicken. It's over here getting hot. Uh, my oven's not quite up to temp yet, and every time I open it up, it just takes it that much longer. But I want to get this in here, and I'm just going to leave it in there until it gets at least to 400. And uh, then I'll pour my cornmeal mix in it and get our cornbread cooking. We're going to start getting our chicken together. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven chicken legs in my bowl here. And uh, this is some chicken legs. This is the last of the fresh chickens that my youngest son processed that he grew himself. This is the last of that, <laughs> that uh, crop of chickens. So I know they're going to be missed because... Uh, um, it's going to be a while before we're getting more fresh chickens, but anyways, so we got our chicken legs here, and they're going to be really good. What I'm going to do, let's see, I can tell you, it's getting hot in this kitchen with that wood cook stove going. Y'all don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. i got to get my salt and pepper, and... I'm going to get a little bit of paprika and garlic, and I'm going to season my chicken. Some people don't chick; they don't season their chicken; they just season the flour. I season both. That's just the way I've always done it. And I've got one hand that I mix, move my chicken around, and my other hand that I don't touch my chicken. I'm going to put a little bit of garlic 
and just kind of mix it around. And I know somebody's going to get on to me because I didn't take off my wedding ring. Uh, you know what? These wedding rings have been through a lot. And um, they seem to be okay. And I haven't killed anybody yet. So, over all these years of cooking, I've never even been made anybody sick. So, we're all good. In fact, I guess I got our immune system built up. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my hands with some soap. And then I'm going to be frying my chicken. I'm just going to use some self-rising flour. Nothing hard about it. Nothing you just really have to think twice about. Just some good, simple country fried chicken. Okay, I'm going to get my self-rising flour. I probably got about a cup and fourth or so here. And I'm just going to pour it over my chicken. I'm going to take this hand again, and I'm just going to go over it. Now there is a little bit of liquid in the bottom of this, and that does, it doesn't hurt nothing because it just makes that, uh, that flour just stick to that chicken, and the more it sticks to it, So I've not dirtied up 50, 50 bowls or anything making fried chicken. This is just easy, no fuss, country fried chicken legs. And Danny himself, he'd rather eat cold chicken legs than he would a hot one. So that's why it doesn't bother me to go ahead and cook the chicken legs up ahead of time. So all you want to do is just coat them good with some good old self-rising flour. Then I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit more salt and pepper. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to start frying some chicken. And my oven for my cornbread should be getting, getting on up there pretty good. So I'm going to wash my hands again. Now I'm going to see, check my oil. And I've got about two inches in my because I like to deep fry my chicken. You can see how that, that flour starts to sizzle up. That means it's ready. So we're gonna stick our chicken legs in there. Now, if you feel like that they're frying up too fast, Just move your, move it on down to part of your stove where it's not so hot. I moved my chicken on down this way for the top of the wood cook stove, not as hot as it was here at the other end. And sometimes you have to do that. You just have to adjust everything because it may be too hot at this end, it may be too hot over here. You just have to adjust it just like you would on top of a regular stove so you get the heat just right. So it's a frying away and I'm fixing to check my pan in my oven to see if it's gotten hot enough. It's getting there. I'm just going to put a lid on this chicken for just a little while. It's still frying up good. I got the temp just where I want it. And then just let it steam and cook and fry in there. And then I'll take the lid off here in a minute and then we'll turn it over and let it finish crisping up real good. Oh yeah, my beans back here. They've been cooking simmering for about three hours. They're good and getting good and tender. So they're doing good. I'm just keeping them on there. The hog jowl's good and cooked. And I'm fixing to 
get my cornbread mix in my iron skillet. Everything's good and done. Paul's home and he's gonna come in and eat. And there's that cornbread. You can see it got good and crunchy. It's good and brown, but it is a different color than just your regular white or yellow cornmeal. But uh, we'll cut into it and look at it a little bit more. But it's all done. I made a little bit of coleslaw to go with it. The only thing missing is maybe some fried potatoes, but you know, I think this is plenty, plenty of carbs right here. So maybe next time we'll fry up some potatoes. So how's them beans tasting? They've been cooking all day on that wood my cook favorite. stuff. <laughs> it's my favorite bean. White beans. And cooked on the wood cook stove. All day. All day, and it's been a hard, cool day, and I'm ready to eat. Made you a little bit of coleslaw to eat them beans. I love coleslaw with my white beans, don't you? And this chicken was cooked on that wood cook stove too. Yes, sir, it was. What do you think about the cornbread that I made out of popcorn? I think it's good. I like it. You didn't put no sugar or nothing in it. No. And I, I, I prefer that, so. <laughs> it's just pretty plain Jane cornbread, but it turned out really good. It was red popcorn from the Mennonite store. Hmm. People have been wanting to know if you can make meal out of popcorn. A lot of people do it, and a lot of people have been asking me, so so we made some up. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. So, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed watching this video and watching me cook on my wood cook stove. Y'all know how much I enjoy doing it when I get plenty of time to do it. So... Cook you a big old pot of beans. There ain't nothing even better. Whether you cook it on a wood cook stove or not, they're always good. So we'll see you on a few days. I'm probably going to see you uh, day by day because I've got a lot I want to get in for Christmas because I want to spend time with my family this weekend, so I won't be filming nothing. So I'm going to try to get as much in as I can. So everybody, we wish y'all a Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. <laughs> And a happy new year. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see y'all in a probably tomorrow for sure. I'm thinking about uh, making an egg dog pie and trying to get that in and maybe a few more things. Yum. Yum. Eggnog, like so it. don't be drinking all the eggnog, Paul. I got to make a pie. 
I want to. <laughs> I know you do. So we'll see you guys. Merry Christmas. God bless. We love y'all. And stay warm. Stay warm. Okay, this is how I like to eat my white beans. A piece of white bread with butter on it. With white beans on top. Then I like to take my little bit of coleslaw on the side. And that's the way I like to eat my white beans.